And so for week three of the, of the class, let's start a brand new empty document. File new, or control new, control N. And we are often going to use this certain template over an advanced HTML5. Later on when we work on more advanced topics like programming uh, to do coding, we're going to go with a different template, but this one will be very good for many of our assignments. The default sizes here are fine, and the frame rate is fine. So just go to advanced HTML5 and create. And then we'll save this. I forgot to mention, uh, when you start the day, you want to turn on the software, you want to log into it, you also want to plug in your flash drive. If you haven't done so, plug in the flash drive. If you have a USB 3 drive, I would recommend to plug it in at the tower. There's a USB 3 plug in the tower, because if you use that little extension cable that's below your monitor, I don't think that's USB 3, and your copying will be slower. So we've got a new document. Let's save it on your flash drive, on your desktop, wherever you want. I'm going to save mine on my flash drive. And I'm going to call it Today's Date Practice. So I'm going to make a folder. Uh, I guess I'll call it Day 3. make any folder if you want however you want to organize yourself and then just save it and call it uh, with today's date 2020 0210 practice anything you want now a couple people mentioned in the week one discussion that some of you had worked with a little bit of Adobe Animate before, or the old classic name, um, Adobe Flash. Uh, has anyone worked with Adobe Flash or Adobe Animate before this class? A couple of people. OK. So it's pretty new to most of us. That's good, because then we can all be on the same page. One of the big things about Adobe Animate is that it is a vector-based drawing tool compared to something like Photoshop, which is a raster based and that just means that the graphics that are made in Adobe Animate are mathematically defined they are vector graphics that are mathematically defined whereas graphics in Photoshop are made out of dots they're bitmaps so that is important because when we draw and resize and reposition our graphics they will not lose quality in Adobe Animate. It's a mathematical formula that designs that, that determines the size of a thing, and therefore you change the formula and you change the thing. A graphic software like Photoshop is based on a grid of dots. And when you resize it bigger or smaller, you might lose quality. So one of the big differences is that Adobe, Illus uh, Adobe Animate is vector-based. Let's see this in action right now. We're going to draw a, a, a moon. Um, we just had the full moon, but when we have the cool crescent moon, right, the little piece cut out of the, out of the moon, I want to draw that. I want to draw like a crescent moon sort of shape. This is how we would do it. Um, I've selected the oval tool. I'm going to click on a fill color down here. We'll also learn a lot about fill colors and stroke colors. We'll get to that in a moment. But the fill color, the color in the inside of the shape. Um, select any moon-like color. I'm just going to go with maybe a gray and draw a circle. Now that doesn't look like a circle to me right here. And that doesn't look like a circle here either. I want a perfect circle. And if you notice, if you put your mouse somewhere like in the diagonal of it, it stays a perfect circle. Or if you hold down the Shift key, it stays a perfect circle. So draw a perfect circle, holding down Shift. Hold Shift and then click and drag, and it draws a perfect circle. If you don't hold Shift, it might be a little bit squashed or stretched. So holding Shift before you let go of the mouse gives you a perfect circle. OK, well, that's a perfect full moon. But I want a crescent moon. I want to cut out 
the shadow of the Earth upon the moon. That's how a crescent moon happens. The Earth passes in front of it and cuts out a piece. Well, this is where the concept of vector graphics really shines. Watch this. So don't do this yet, but watch this. I am going to draw another circle, and then I'm going to uh, remove that circle. And when I remove the circle, I cut out a piece of the original. OK, let me back up and show you what I did here. We have a certain circle, a certain shape, a certain fill object. I'm going to draw another circle, but of a different color. So switch to any other shade of gray or any other color. I'm going to then draw. You could try to draw it right on top, but sometimes you'll often miss. Instead, maybe draw it on the outside over here somewhere, and then we can move it into place. We have one shape, one object, one circle of a certain color, another circle, another object, another shape of a different color. I'm going to move it on top of the original shape where I wanted to kind of cut it out. And then I'm going to deselect. I'm going to click elsewhere. Remember when we click on an object, we select it. The dotted line appears. We've selected it. It's the thing we're working with. When you deselect it, it's just clicking anywhere else. Then I'm going to click it again to select it and then move it. And now when I've moved it, I've cut it out. So that was a lot of clicking. And that's true, because if I had selected it and moved it here, and then not deselected it and move it again, nothing happens. You have to do the deselect so that Adobe Animate sees that one shape has taken the place of another and did this shape merge. And then when I click it and move that, it cuts out the part that was covered, or vice versa. If I move the, the gray circle, click to select that and move that, now I have that cut out part. So if you don't, if you don't deselect, it won't do it. And so that other part of the shape now is completely gone. It doesn't exist anymore. The mathematical formula has been changed. It was previously, I don't know, r equals 12. And now it's a different formula because we've also got a curve inside of it. We don't need to know that it's a formula. We don't need to deal with the math. It does it internally. But the result is that we get a shape cut out. So we've got a cool moon and we've got the sun. Then what I could also do is maybe take that moon shape. I want to duplicate it and keep working with it. Uh, if you right click that first shape, there's a couple ways to do this. You can right-click copy, right-click paste. You can make a copy of it. So select your moon shape, right-click copy, and then click on, then deselect, click anywhere in an empty spot, and then right-click. We have two kinds of pastes. The classic Control V will paste it in the center of the document, or Control Shift V will paste it from exactly where you copied it. So sometimes that's useful to copy and place it in the exact same place to then do something with that, or just to put it in the center of the document. So either or, let's put it in the center, and I got a new copy. Now, as long as I don't deselect, this shape will not merge or cut out the other shape. But as soon as I click here, and then deselect by clicking elsewhere, they've merged. And now when I click and move that one, I cut out that, and I get another two shapes. The mathematical formula was displaying a circle, and now I've got two shapes. So this will get a little bit of getting used to if you've never done this before. And you can undo. You'll probably have to do like three times compared to one time in other software, because everything that you click is an undo. If I deselect, that's an undo. If I reselected it but then moved it, that's an undo. That's another undo. So don't be afraid to press undo like seven times. Um, because everything that you do is, an un is, a, is a level of undo. So the big takeaway here is that these are independent shapes, independent objects with their own mathematical formula. And when you put one object on another object, if they're different colors, they cut each other. 
if they're different colors? What happens if you put two shapes together that are the same color? Hmm. Let's try. I'm going to put both of these together, deselect. I'm going to move the first one. And now, oops, they become one thing. So I started off with a cool moon shape, but I put two of them together. And I have this cool kind of like interesting toupee on its side or a little bat creature, you know, if I rotate it this way or something, I guess. Or what about if I take that shape and then I do again, right click copy, right click paste, and then rotate it like this, and then combine it like this and deselect and look at that. I started with a circle and I have this amazing shape for my logo. This is the power of this type of graphic, vector based graphics, it's mathematically based. Shapes can merge, shapes can cut, and when it's the same color, they combine. When it's different colors, even like 1% different color, they will cut each other. So what if I take my moon and put it in the sun and then rotate it a little like that? and then cut that out and move it over here. And I've got this shape, where a shape inside of a shape to do a cutout. This is the part about saying, this is what I said earlier, that we'll have these various lectures where we do freestyle stuff like this, and we'll do stuff in the book. But I hope you're also exploring on your own. What if I do this? What if I do that? What if I try this tool? What if I use the lab time to just explore? That's going to be one of the ways that you become adept at any software or anything, just doing it more than the minimal required. So I'm going to save that. Does that work? Any questions so far on this concept that we're doing? Right now we're editing the project, but I, would, I want to see it, like how would it look like for real if a person didn't have Adobe Animate. So remind me, how do I see my project? How do I preview my project so it looks like something for like a person that doesn't have the software. You can test it, you can play it up on the top right corner, that little play button on the top right, go ahead and hit that, test movie. We can also get to that menu via control, control menu, and then we have uh, test, which is keyboard shortcut, control enter on the number pad. Uh, that got changed. I've been using Adobe Animate for probably like almost like 15 years or more. And it used to be a different shortcut and now we change it here. <laughs> Number enter. In the enter, in the enter pad. Oh, it was just, just Control-Enter before, but now it's Control-Enter on the number pad. So anyway, when we talk about testing the movie or viewing the project, right now we're in the editing mode. I want to view it. I want to run it. I want to test it. I'll use different words for it. I want to, I want to test it. So Control-Test or press the little test button up here, or control enter on the keyboard. That opens it up more as like what a person would see it as on their web browser, or as a GIF, or a ping, or a JPEG graphic, or a movie and such. Now, didn't I have a second silver moon? A moment ago? Why doesn't it show up in my output here in the web browser? What's that? It's outside the canvas? Yes. I had this extra circle, I had this extra object outside of the canvas. The things that are outside of the canvas will not show up in the final result. This is how when we talk about animation later, we can have the moon appearing out here and then rising into the scene and then setting and going out. Everything, anything that's outside of the boundaries of the canvas is um, not going to show up in the final result. Now, we've made a couple of shapes. I want to start like a new sheet of paper and play with a couple more things in this concept. Um, I'm working on layer one, my current sheet of paper. And maybe you can call that whatever you want, sun and moon. And then obviously later on we'll do diamond and pearl, yes, whatever. Right now it's sun and moon. 
Um, special characters are not permitted. Okay, yeah, so uh, I'm trying to do a slash, but it doesn't let you do a slash. Okay, underscore. Sun, moon. I'm going to lock the sun, moon layer, or whatever shape you drew. Obviously, if you drew a cat, we'll call it cat. You can call this whatever you want. But I'm going to lock the layer and hide it. So on the column here, we can click the lock. We're no longer working with that layer. And then over here on the view, I don't, I don't want to see it as well, because I want to create a new layer. Let's create a new layer. We'll call this ghost. We're going to draw a ghost based on simple shapes. So new layer called ghost. So even though I created a new layer, remember you've got to confirm that you're on that you've selected the layer that we think we're working on. I created a layer, but I'm not on it. This one's highlighted. I'm clicking on ghost layer. We're gonna draw one of those ghosts, like one of those classic uh, ghosts, like kind of like maybe like the Pac-Man ghost. <laughs> Can you visualize one of those? It's like kind of like round on the top, and it's got the little like curvy parts at the bottom. Yeah. So we'll do that kind of ghost. The way I would do that with simple shapes, because you might be able to get the brush tool and draw it, I want to explore using simple shapes to, to create complex things. So with the oval tool, I want to do one of the ghosts. There's like a red one, a yellow one, a blue one, a pink one, or any one you want. I'm going to go with a red one. I'm going to make a circle. Do I need it to be perfectly round? That's up to you. Do you want it to be a little bit more wide like that? That's up to you. So I'm drawing a circle. It's not perfectly round. And the great thing about Adobe Animate is there's just so many ways to accomplish something. But the bad thing about Adobe Animate is there's just so many ways to accomplish something. So everyone has an opinion on how to do something, and everyone's right, and everyone's wrong. It just depends what you're trying to accomplish. Did you get your result? Did the way you do it make sense? Was it efficient? Was it elegant? Whatever way you want to define this stuff. Here's one way that, that, I'll, that I'll do it. I'm just going to start with this kind of shape, and then I want to cut out the little kind of like undulations, the little curves at the bottom of the shape. Later on, I can make it taller or whatever. I want to cut out a few kind of like round parts right here. I want to cut out a few round parts. Well, I can use some circles. Uh, so first I'm going to kind of move this a little bit more to the center of the screen. Oh, look at this. I'm doing this without using the, the mouse. One of the ways that you might be efficient is by using the arrow keys. Remember that. When you select the object, you can click and then use arrow keys one pixel at a time, or shift plus arrow keys. I'm going to draw a couple of ovals, a couple of circles in a different color, and put them down at the bottom here to cut out a little circle area here and another one here. And then we'll talk about smoothing the curves and all that stuff. There's plenty to learn. But I'll go to some other, some other color. I have one of these circles. I'm going to put it over here somewhere. Now, um, the snapping ability over here, that it jumps to the place that I don't want it exactly, I may or may not want that. We can turn that off over on the view snapping. So if things are jumping into each other in the wrong spot, you can go to view menu, snapping, and there's a bunch of things that are active. They often help you, but sometimes they get in the way. Um, so probably for the moment, I would turn off snap align and snap object. I want this thing to snap into this object. And alignment is that it kind of knows like there's a vertical and horizontal in that object. Let's snap it, let it aligns there. We have a lot of great alignment tools that will help us. But for the moment, if you want to try this, I'm going to go to view snapping, turn off snap align, and view snapping, 
snap to object. So then now I can move my object exactly where I want. And I'm going to do one version of it like this so far that I'm going to cut out a few spots like this. Now, we might have visualized a different kind of ghost, and we'll do that one as well. But I want to show you this because we've cut out these edges, and we can still further refine the mathematical formula of the object. So watch this. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Uh, we have our zoom at the top right. If you want to, you can zoom in a few clicks like that. You can zoom in with selecting a value up here. You can put that back to fit to window, show frame. You have different ways to zoom so that you can see the artwork better. You also have control scroll wheel on the mouse to zoom into a section to draw it perfectly. Hold control on the keyboard and scroll wheel. You also have on the keyboard control plus or minus. Control plus or minus on the keyboard. So here's what I want to do. I'm kind of zooming in a lot to go look at the edges right here. And you might have seen this as you were playing with this before. It's a mathematical formula that defines this circle and it has a couple cutouts. I can move my selection tool. Sometimes I forget to mention jumping between tools, but the selection tool, V, if you jump to the selection tool, and you have nothing selected, just click on the empty spot, and you get close to an edge, your cursor changes to say you're about to change a curve. <clears throat> when you click and drag it, you start to change the curve of the object. Or if you get to where there is a corner, your mouse cursor will change to a corner. And when you get to that and drag it, depends how your shape was made. In my case, it looks like that. You, you might get some weird results because I try to move it over here and you get something weird like that. That's normal, kind of. And then you might find the edge here. So in my case, because I had drawn my circle in such an exact place without even trying, that there's technically two corners right there. It's hard to see. Oh, there it is. But there were technically two corners right there that I didn't even realize. And so when I try to move that corner, there's another corner. Uh, there is a way to simplify this, these shapes. So I'll talk about that, of course. <laughs> But when you try to pull this stuff right here and it kind of doesn't behave exactly how you want, that's just kind of normal. And then even with you overlap a shape, that gets even weirder. But that's normal, and we'll get to we'll understand how that works as we do it more. But if I try to grab a corner, hey, maybe I can pull the corner of this one down, something like that. I can maybe pull in this curve over here. This is just to explore that we have these different ways to manip manipulate a basic shape. You can start off with a simple circle, and then I add more circles, or squares, or triangles, or stars, and other things. And uh, we get different results. Now right here, I can continue to kind of refine this shape. But there still might be some corners that are kind of like wonky. So one thing that we can do to smooth the shape is when you select the shape with the select tool, you get some options down here at the bottom of your tool. Smoothen it, straighten it. 
Sometimes your line is almost perfectly vertical. And you want to make it perfectly vertical. Select it and hit straighten. It'll make it perfectly vertical or horizontal or 45 degrees or whatever. Or sometimes you have a curve that's almost perfect. And instead, if you hit that smooth button, it'll smoothen it. So maybe try that. Click it once. This is the one where the more you click it, the more it smoothens it. And there's like no perfect amount of times to click it. It depends on your object. I clicked it, I think, three or four times. And I'm getting this. This is going to be a really bad ghost, and then we'll draw a better one in a moment. But then what I can do is put the eyes, and I've got a ghost. That's, that's the ghost in Pac-Man that I haven't played that game in years. So I'm going to look up how does a ghost really look like in Pac-Man, and then we'll draw a better one. So we'll say Pac-Man ghost. We'll look up Pinky. There's a, there's a ghost called Pinky. So can we get like a cool sprite version that I can borrow? I mean to use as a... OK, so technically, the original one was very pixelated. And technically, the original one had a little triangle and then a square, and then a triangle, um, and then eyes, and then like pupils. Okay, I forgot about the pupils. Um, but we've got like triangles at the bottom, and then eyes there. So round shape, then kind of a square shape, then triangles, then circles. Okay, so I'm going to try again. Um, I'm going to move this ghost off over here. Try this time a circle plus a square body. Triangles, I'll show you where the triangle object is. Triangles down there if you want to. That seems to be a square. Oh, this has got two triangles here. I guess when it moves, the little legs move. So that one, I like that. So triangles there. Yeah, so a couple triangles there pointing down or pointing in, and then circles plus eyes. So I'm going to try again. I'm going to go with the circle. Make a perfect circle. Then I'll make a square. And I could try drawing the square on top of the previous one. But what might happen, and it's hard to see on the projector, but if I zoom in, it's like one pixel, my square is like one pixel larger than my square, so it's technically slightly outside. Or I might draw it too small inside. We have a panel that will give us the information of what we're drawing pixel by pixel. Up on the window menu, info. You have this panel telling you you've drawn a square, a circle that's exactly 60 by 60, which then I can make a square that's exactly 60 by 60 so that it all lines up. So, window menu info, get a little panel, draw a circle, it's telling me um, on the top right corner. 250, 252 wide. So then I can draw a square. That's 252. Those numbers are more accurate when you are um, when you are zoomed in. I guess it's the height. 242, and no, wait, width and height. Okay, it's 169, uh, 165, so I'll make a square 165. Remember when the shapes are the same, um, 
the, sh the same color, they will merge. Now let's say I'm drawing this square, but it's too big, it's too small. I've still got it selected, so it's not going to merge. What I can do is get really advanced. I can put it where I want it to be and then stretch it out to fill the rest. Remember, I can go over to free transform. And then when I stretch it out, well, it's going to stretch on all sides because it's stretching from that anchor point. I can move this anchor point to say stretch it from there. And then when I stretch it, it stretches from that corner. Mm -hmm. So the default is when you switch over to the free transform and you're going to resize something, it resizes from that center anchor point. Instead, if you put that anchor point somewhere else, it'll grow or shrink from that starting point. So I could move my shape over here somewhere, put it exactly right with the arrow keys perhaps, switch to quick transform, Q, and then stretch it out. So I've got the round part, I've got the square part, it's too much of a square. Make a new shape to cut it, or just select the part that I don't want and then delete it on the keyboard. Something like that. I, I use the plain old selection tool to draw a square selection like this, and there's parts I don't want, so I can just select it and then on the keyboard press delete. So I've got the top round part, I got the bottom square part. Um, I want to cut out some triangles at the bottom. We have a triangle shape as well. It's uh, it's hidden. Um, we uh, I forgot to say when we started at the beginning of the day, remember to switch our mode over to the essentials, but I guess we're okay. If your screen looks different than mine, you might be in a different mode. We forgot to say that, to go to Essentials and to reset our, our timeline, but I guess we're fine. Um, so my view of my tools is a little limited. Do you see these as well? I've only got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You've only got nine tools like me. If you've got more than that, you're, you're okay. But if you have only nine like me, the other tools are hidden in this three-dot menu. And here we can pull up the, uh, the, uh, the tool to... Uh, make triangles. If you click on the three dot menu, we have this poly star tool. Remember, we made stars with this last time. Well, now we'll make triangles. Uh, it's hidden in the three dot menu. Poly star, it's a little um, hexagon. Click that. And then we need to see the options of the tool. So Oh, it says drag and drop tools. OK, I guess I have to drag them over here. We'll activate the mode that it's active in a little bit. Uh, but OK, reading it explains it. So uh, I'm dragging this tool to be used here. So then click on it. And at the moment, this is going to draw uh, pentagons. That's funny, the shape is, an, is a hexagon, but then it draws a pentagon. Well, if I want to set exactly what kind of shape that is, uh, I'm going to uh, set the options for this particular shape. Go to Window, Properties. 
If you don't have a properties panel, you can open the properties panel, which then lets you change details of your tool or your object and such. So window properties, scrolling to the bottom, tool options is a polygon of five sides, a polygon of three sides, aka triangle is what I want. Change that to three. Now I'll get triangles. So what I could do is add triangles that are, you know, pointing down or add triangles that are pointing up, but then they have to be a different color. I'll, I'll fix it in a moment, but I could add triangles the opposite way. I'm just doing it a little quickly, then I'll do it a little slower. I could draw triangles that cut into the shape. Or I could do triangles that are the same color to merge them. What I, would, what I would want to do, though, is, is duplicate the object. Now, that's a, that's a better shortcut than Control, Copy, and Paste. When you want to duplicate an object, you can select it and press Control D. It's up there on the Edit menu, I think, somewhere. Control D, yeah, right there, Duplicate. So that might be a faster way. Instead of Control, Copy, Control, Paste, Control D to duplicate your currently selected object. Make sure to move it away so that it doesn't merge. And then I can put in here. I drew the triangles way too big, but let's say I do something like that. It's more like a vampire than a ghost, but you get the idea. So here's what we will do. I've kind of started you off a little bit here. Uh, keep working to draw the ghosts. We'll take our first break at two o'clock, so you have about eight minutes. Work on the ghost. Make at least one ghost, kind of like the example up over here on my um, on my results. You know, one of these or whatever you want. Um, take a moment to finish the ghost, however you want, to practice with the tool. Ask us if you need help. At two o'clock, we'll take a break, and then at 2.10, we'll come back to do the lesson in the book. But for the moment, just practice a little bit with combining shapes, merging shapes, the various tools. And then we'll go on.